okay, this is this is my theory, and I'm not alone in this, but this is the reason why I believe I believe Galtieri had reason to think was in some way tricked or some event happened that we that has been covered up that we don't know about it has not become part of um, of the story of the of, of the history of the war for which he felt that the British were not going to respond militarily that maybe they were going to perhaps he felt they were going to act up prepare prepare their military start a uh, sable uh, saber rattling but he never thought that they were going to actually do immediately send a task force to attack them and uh, war the Argentinian soldiers on the island and the reason I believe this is because if you look at every other war conflict that we have known in modern in modern times all of them all of them are characterized by stewing smoldering problems protests flag burnings um, s saber rattling um, the people are aware of a possibility. Um, they talk about it. It ends up, it's, it's almost like an avalanche that slowly gives way. If you count the time before, between uh, the first moment somebody says, conceives in, 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 in just informally in culture on the streets, says, oh, do you think that maybe our countries are going to go to war? To when the actual first um, shooting occurs, there's an average amount of time, an average uh, expanse of time that describes the, all of the conflicts we have known in modern history. When you look at the Malvinas conflict, it starkly contrasts like a sore thumb. It shocked everybody. Everybody thought it was ridiculous. These are two countries that are friends, that are totally intermingled with friendly. They travel, there, there's no, nothing. There, it's a, their sons, uh, Argentina has uh, uh, been immigrated. They're the son by uh, Europeans, and they're the sons of, of Europe, and they're all about their um, English uh, influences and activities, and they think, um, they feel good about their friendship with England. I mean, this was Argentina until the very last hour. Very last hour. The next day, they all found out that the, um, the Junta invaded the islands on this 180-year-old uh, uh, conflict, which moreover was defined over over these 150 years as a passive lazy conflict that kept getting rehashed there was never any talk of military anything there was never there were a few silly events the argentinians went there on a piper plane and planted a flag one time and, but really it was all about something that we a little quarrel that we have uh that doesn't even lead to country uh, to rivalry between their countries. They were uh, uh, in the greater picture of the relationship. This was something that was invisible, and every Argentinian knew about it. It was always there. They all thought that the Malvinas uh, they were supposed to be Argentinian or something, and but it was never it was never a thing. And so the Argentinians were caught completely by surprise. If you count. The, the time period from which um, the invasion, the junta surprised the country, shocked the country. Um, and I want to talk also about why all of a sudden they were celebrating 
the next day on, on uh, the British used this to say the Argentinians wanted the war which is totally twisted and I'm gonna explain why if you count the time from the day of the the invasion to when um, not just Margaret Thatcher started saying we're you know but when they actually arrived I think it was maybe 15 or 20 days I don't I don't remember right now I should have done my homework before doing this um, but it's not more than 20 days or 21 days or maybe 15 days actually I don't remember but it's a time period that is ridiculously quick, precipitous, almost, almost like they were ready, like the finger, the finger was on the trigger compared to every other conflict. Now I'm going to explain uh, that ha there has been in the world, between any countries that you want to think of. Um, and if there, if I am missing by lack of knowledge, by my ignorance, a few examples that are close to matching such a precipitous reaction, I'm sure, I am sure that it is not more than a, a five percent or or two percent or one percent of the overall military military activity and a start of wars on the planet. Okay, I'm going to explain. When the Argentinians were surprised the very next day, there's interviews where they, the, the, some people are bewildered. They, they what? They, they attacked the British. The British, they were, they're shopping in Herod's, right? They, they, nothing makes sense, uh, except those people that thought that were more fanatic, and it, it, it swept the country because it made, it released something that the uh, not just Argentina but Latin Americans, Latin America always feels that they are subject to uh, English and American power, and they mess with their economies, and they they mess with their pol politicians, and they everybody knows that they brought the, the the Washington boys brought the 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 Allende and uh, and the military and so they, and the uh, the help of. Uh, of the juntas installed by supposedly installed by the Americans to help against the subversive movements and and communism uh, and all this stuff and so they feel pressured and they had pressured by always like being the the sidekick of or the backyard of America right um, and Argentina probably w one would say seems to sh uh, manifest or show this less than other countries but in reality it's just a different version um, of the same and you take the fact that this conflict this uh, this story of the Malvinas Islands has been taught to to the Argentine people since the day since colonial days it happened in 1833 and since then the whole population knows about it and and at different time periods, it, it kept kicked up more by it getting taught more in school, and um, or events happen like that landing, or I mean, it's a subject that it has never died down, has always been pulsating along uh, Argentinian history, especially apparently uh, after uh, the after the fifties, and then when it became uh, recognized in the United Nations, it became an issue. Uh, uh, officially uh, registered in the United Nations, and there have been well, and from from there on, it be, it grew in its officiality. Officiality. Um, when this invasion happens, it's it's like a release. Like finally, we're not going to let ourselves get kicked around. We're taking back our island, and everybody got euphoric. But it's not because they wanted the war to happen. This is what the, the British arguing in Facebook don't understand. They don't know the Argentinian people. They just fight against who they imagine is on the other side of the screen. And they insult each other and they, 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 they hand these uh, standard formula, cookie cutter uh, judgments on uh, why, you know, they, anyways, they don't know Argentinians. They, it's, it's, it's a far away culture. It's a different country. Until not that long ago, it was almost a different world. Um, 
and how they perceive and how they feel life in the world and themselves in the world. So, not okay. So, not only all that, that whole part of something is really weird how it, how it triggered happened so quickly. Uh, but after the war, after the war again, compared to all other military situations in the world, what do you have? You have uh, the victors um, dealing with a country that was uh, beat, uh, and we don't really want to, with an atmosphere, or a, a, let's make friends kind of thing, right? Let's, let's, uh, let's not stay, let's not keep a grudge and um, things calm down. But there's not really, a, you know, if you're talking about some places in the Middle East where consistently, consistently it comes up again and there's a little problem here, a little problem there, and there's like bombs and then it dies down, a new leader again with the same old problem, you know, you say, well, a country, one of one of the uh, Western country like the states or England, wins, and this time we're going to put a military base there. You know, but usually that's not what humanity and what countries seek. What they seek is to okay, now that we settle that, let's repair the world again. Let's repair the situation. When Argentina loses, they exhausted all their bullets. Their people never, the country was never a warring country ever since 19, uh, 1870 was their last war with, any, with anybody. And since 1870, they were a, a peace-faring country that thought, oh, wars happen over there in the Northern Hemisphere. They just, they had their uh, military takeovers and coups and, you know, little events that happened politically, but they never... They're not a country that engages other nations in war. So the whole idea of war and warring in other countries is foreign. That's why they were so, everybody, not just Argentinians, everybody was so surprised that England would, well, this is a way of saying seeing it, that England would attack Argentina. And, and you have to see it as England would attack Argentina because Argentina it, it was, has no had no capability, still doesn't have... Uh, much capability other than to attack maybe one of its neighboring countries, but it can't. It could never really send a fleet to uh, invade Colombia on the other side of the continent, and so it's almost like a, a a sure win for England. And if it's a sure win for a country, and it, it means it has the choice to go to war or not go to war. So, anyways, so everybody was surprised. Um, uh, more of a choice. Everybody was surprised about what was happening. Um, but what is also uh, worthy of, of analyzing and noting, noticing is that after the war, the Argentinians completely were angry and hated their military. They got rid of the, the genocidal dictatorship that was killing... I mean, the country was down. When the war happened, they were already getting... They were in fear. The military was occupying. They had them all uh, in a state of siege all the time and killing their, uh, so their um, by by guessing in the dark. They would just round people up, and if ever if they thought some of them were involved with subversive movements, they'd kill them. They'd torture them, and if they didn't say anything, we'll kill them anyways. It was horrible. It was the worst thing that happened. One of the worst things that happened in Argentina, and that's what the country was living. At the time, the junta went and invaded the, uh, took back the islands because supposedly it's, it's not supposedly, it's a, it's a, it was an existing uh, dispute. Therefore, technically, since the dispute was never dropped from 1833, and Argentina always protested these, uh, the occupation uh, and the, the creation of the overseas territory. Um, in, in, in proper definition, the Argentinians took back these islands. But, of course, it's, it was immediately called by the British an invasion. So, the thing is, the Argentinians have never been adamant about voicing this real conflict. They, they were more into the friendship with Europe 
And so they just never innocence. The, 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 these these are people that come from an age of innocence. They don't speak of the conflict uh, that we have and the possible war that we we ought to have with another country. Um, they don't talk. They just let England basically handle the dispute, and they always concentrated more on other things. So England was always able to give definition and language to whenever, and actually they, they preferred not to talk about this because they prefer people not to investigate and see exactly what happened in 1833 and uh, what did the Argentinian settlement on the islands consist of and where did it come from historically and how much were the English actually involved before then on the islands and all these details they rather not you know they came and took the islands because the Argentinians could not defend themselves the Americans came first beat them all up because they wanted to have free whaling and free exploitation of resources so this guy got upset because the Argentinian government governor said no we're gonna have taxes uh, so Silas Duncan from the Lexington uh, you know said, oh we're not we could this is no man's land we can just come and take seals and hunt for whales and we're not going to allow somebody to impose uh, taxes on us said to the Argentinian uh, government um, whatever it was a governor and uh, went back came back with some some guns and cannons and blasted the settlement went back to the states and then um, you know the English oh look the Spanish are gone the Spanish are not going to they left because the Spanish argued with them before and then we rather we'll just you know not get into it. We're not going to fight the Spanish over those islands, you know. Uh, so they they took their settlement and left, <laughs> and the Argentinians, which continued on the Spanish dominion of these islands uh, in paper and in settlement, because there are drawings that show the Spanish, you know, and the Argentinians were going to build a little church and everything. So the Spanish were there, and and they were administrating the islands through Buenos Aires and through Montevideo. So the Argentinian claim is very real. The, the difference is that Britain has, you know, the press, the presses, the, the, the publications, they're all into writing everything down. And so they, they have created and produced a, a legible history that today seems to make their story more real and while the Argentinians have to go well you know we have this letter sent from Miss Little Carmen that was having a baby on the islands and she was writing to to uh, her cousin on the mainland and, and so there's other types that kind of dwindle compared to but in reality if you were able to travel in time the picture would be completely different to what you hear today these two uh, sides argue the islands uh, uh, like um, you would probably hear the word Islas Malvinas a lot more, if not most of the time, depending on where you are. You would hear of uh, Argentinians uh, going to the islands all the time. In fact, the Americans uh, referred to the islands as an as a Argentinian settlement and colony. So if you, went to, if you were to travel in history, anyways. So the English uh, don't want uh, really anybody to see this. And because it, it doesn't, they can dominate, they can, they dominate inf information. And everybody that's anybody in a newspaper c uh, coming up in Africa or anywhere wants to get into journalism and accesses the internet. And they, they say, well, I want to write a story for my new internet journal. Where do I get the first story on what happened in, in India or in Japan? It's like, well, research. And so there is all the English material. And so English has come to dominate even the information that countries in, in other languages write in their own interest. It's unbelievable. And so this is what the Argentinians are facing in, um, in, 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 in try to produce a, a real picture, especially a real a historical picture of what happened on these islands. But going back to the theory of why I think something, was, something happened that we don't know about that influenced Galtieri to think that he was not. Um, uh, he was going to get away with, you know, beating his chest, taking back the island. So the Argentinians uh, forgave him for all the genocide and and uh, all the disasters they were doing. And then uh, apparently he must have believed 
that there was leeway for the English to then say, well, okay, we're, we're not going to let you take the islands, but, you know, let's talk and we'll let you uh, say that you have the rights on the islands for the first time, uh, but we're going to administrate the, the islanders and it, you know, we're going to have our base there, but you guys can now go and plant the flag and you can say that, and we can say that the dispute is over. He probably imagined something else was going to happen. And he imagined something else was going to happen because it makes absolutely no sense at all that he would take Argentina to war against the British. I mean, it's like saying a little snail standing up to an elephant and saying, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think you're going to crush me. I'm going to war you. It makes absolutely no sense. So there's, this, is the, this, this is central to my theory that something has been covered up very small in scale, very subtle. We, we know that the, the secret world of governments can work uh, not necessarily through official routes, but you know they send people here and there to do little things that start things going. But anyways, um, because he must have felt that something, something was going to work out. And I have no doubt that he was in the privacy of his own home, own home at one point, completely shocked that Britain had actually decided to, with 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 quickness and 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 uh, and immediately decide to send a task force to go war the Argentinians off the island, the the junta. And these were soldiers. I mean, England. These were soldiers that were not trained. They had ammunition maybe to fight for four months, if that, five months maybe. Uh, they ha you could count the exosets and missiles they had in one hand. If they were going to use everything up in a matter of, of weeks. They had no in real war, modern war experience. And they were soldiers that came from a culture that could not imagine. They don't even, they don't even think it's funny to kick somebody, uh, to, 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 to see a bludgeoned person in war. They're not from a warring culture. They, they didn't grow up watching horror films. You know, they were, they, they're a culture that really had not the imagination of going to kill British soldiers, soldiers in their trenches. Another thing that is completely maligned is that the, uh, their captains started staking them to the ground and torturing them and starving them because they didn't, you know, supposedly, they, they can't even say it. They can't even explain why they, uh, what the reason they were doing that is, was. Be, and they, they say stupid things like they stole food. They're not saying the real reason. And what I believe is the real reason was is that the captains were, were losing it. They could see that these kids did not, that the majority of these soldiers were kids who did not want to war and kill. You have to have uh, developed the, the, the skin of war to the, the conviction, the decisiveness to go out there and kill. And I think the captain started seeing that, you know, they were, they were like trying to go to your neighborhood, you know, have a bunch of kids playing ball and tell them, let's go kill people. They would all get confused. They would, what? They would start looking around, you want us to what? So when the captain saw this, this uh, reaction, they, they went nuts and they started trying to pressure them with fear by torturing them and staking them to the ground. It was horrible what happened to the Argentinians. Now, are you going to tell me that a country uh, like Britain, with the war experience Britain has, did not know that that's what was going to happen on the islands? When they, got, they were going to they, they find soldiers that, did, you know, were not really into fighting them and they were going to not want to fight and that they were going to run out of ammunition and that, w that they were going to be totally unorganized. So this is another thing. The media, the British uh, storyline that the Argentines, of course, pick up because it's a better explanation of their, their side of the story than the, the, the not um, flattering alternative that, you know, oh my God, you know, we almost didn't win, say the British. We had to put everything together at the very last minute. And we came really close. And the bravery of the Argentine of pilots, you know, and they, they, they were a force to be reckoned with. Of course, of course you're going to say you don't want to look like we went and took a candy from a baby. 
they're, it's all they're, it's all about pumping up and make encouraging the next generations of of soldiers to think that war is a virtuous and noble and courageous thing, and it certainly worked in this case because the alternative was to say, well, we knew we were going to win very easily, and we just did. Now, since they did know they were going to win very easily, it also le leads you to realize that means that if you know you're going to win, you can plan accordingly. Well, now you know we can do this and this and that in the region in the southern cone. We're gonna and you know we're gonna end up putting a uh, military base there, you know, and plan after the war. These are things that the Argentinians don't even talk about. Um, add this. You keep adding these chapters. Only supports the theory that Galtieri was somehow led to believe by somebody, by some intentional event, that he could do this and it would he could find a way of making it work out for him because the British were not gonna actually full out attack back in war. I think that was a surprise for him. And so again, going back to after the war, after the war, um, Argentina, like I said, was exhausted. The last thing they wanted to do was, you know, they they didn't have it before in them, and they and they certainly didn't have it now to have any militant hate towards the British or the Islanders for Christ's sakes. The the the, the last thing they wanted to do, they didn't even know these guys. They were curious about those people that were living on the islands. Um, the are the British instead of now. I'm not saying that all countries. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm shocked that countries don't do the most intelligent thing that they could possibly do in the outcome of a war. But somewhere down from there is the area that that uh, coincides or agrees with how countries after a war really want to get the ugliness past. Uh, behind them and try to get things going in, on a good note again. Unless, like I gave the example, it, it's a situation where they're constantly, constantly, constantly having problems for the last century and so they end up putting a military base. But in this case, it was exactly the opposite. It was like your, your sweet neighbor who all of a sudden went crazy and um, you know started shouting at you and threw a stone at your yard. You know, are you going to roll in the tanks uh, because he always does that? No. <laughs> if it was a crazy neighbor that every morning he's always throwing stuff at your house, well, eventually you're going to set something up on your yard, and right? But in this case, it was the, the sweetheart neighbor. Um, and so Britain, instead of doing the most intelligent thing, which would be, well, you know, let's make sure that the islanders are not... Uh, freaked out about this because they probably also knew that the islanders were freaked out about a war. These are people that grew up with with sheep around them for for almost for 150 years, you know. And all of a sudden, the the, the the Argentinians land, and the military start bombing. The British military start bombing the islands, and you know what I mean. And so, if you are thinking about the islanders as they say they were doing everything for them, I would imagine that um, you know you would say, well, you know, look, first thing we got to do, look at the Argentinians; they're destroyed. They just got genocidally killed by the stupid junta. That you know, let's just say that they're not aware that that my theory of my theory, right? Um, what we need to do now is make sure that uh, they get along and that they're not fearful of each other. And you know what? Maybe we can use it because after the, the dictatorship goes away, the Argentinians will be more willing to be cooler and more and friendlier after what they did to them, after what their military occupation did to them. And so this can, we can make the no. They don't think any of these more intelligent, wiser, uh, approaches, they immediately install a military base on the islands. Now, military bases are installed when there's a threat. The excuse that people on Facebook always say is that um, 
you know, well, how do we know you're not going to do it again? I mean, I'm not even going to take this seriously. I'm not even going to take what they say seriously. I'm going to talk to people that I think have a little bit more intelligence uh, and reasoning here. Um, they install a military base and they make it clear they don't do anything that's diplomatically softer saying okay we're now going to do this and we're going to train also for other things you know to fight in in Siberia if we ever need to no they point blank say that it's in Argentina's benefit imagine what this does to the Argentinians who haven't had a war since 1870 and this craziness with the junta just uh, just massacred their youth and their intelligence uh, because the, the 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 whole subversive thing was 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 uh, brewed in the universities of young idealist people that wanted to over uh, you know uh, be, create a more modern country. Um, there wasn't a communist revolution going on in Argentina, um, so they were. Um, I do so. It's it's just so sad what happened. There's movies about how these kids were just totally, totally idealist children. Uh, some were older, but a great number of them were truly adolescents, still almost adolescents, that were patriotic idealists. They, uh, and, you know, there, were, there was a small percentage of, of those uh, bastards that would, that would plant bombs, but, you know, the military went and started torturing indiscriminately. So whatever those subversives did, uh, if there was ever an argument against them, disappeared because the military responded a hundred times brutally more devastating to the country. So, um, so all these things are not factored in, and 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 Britain installs a military base for ten years, from eighty. Uh, three when the war was over eighty two it only lasted two weeks. It was like a like a play war that killed people. Um, it seems so calculated. And um, so these these facts of time and occurrence that contrast the rest of the world's military history, to me corro corroborate uh, that. Galtieri was in, in, into a theory, corroborate in producing and creating, and I'm not the first one, I think a lot of people, some people, I saw something in Facebook and now I can't find it anymore, but anyways, on YouTube, but um, that Galtieri was um, cajoled somehow by a few messages, by somehow to think that he could do this, and also that it seems that Britain was expecting was planning accordingly so if you because they went and the first thing they do is, is is plan a military base completely unnecessarily unnecessarily unprovoked this is not a country that is enemies that is britain's friend or that has ever seen england as an, a military enemy it is a country that is peaceful and friendly to britain so there's nothing that makes sense about saying, well, now we're going to put a military base there. Anyways, the Argentinians don't say anything. Ten years go by, and of course, I mean, uh, and uh, um, Nestor Kirchner wins, and he, before that, on top of it, let's recap a little, let's, let's uh, uh, rewind a little bit. Before the, the Peronists, Kirchner came, there were governments, Menem, that were friendly, and they made overtures, and there were let's let's let bygones be bygones. You would think that Britain at that point said, "Okay, good. As long as we're clear, we're going to move the military base away." There's 2,500 people on these islands. Okay, the military base was <laughs> it was funny. Everybody, how many are you counting the military base? <laughs> because there was almost as many people um, doesn't remove the base so more you, you you start thinking well Britain wanted to put that base and if 
And if it, if you know, if you add two and two together, it sure seems like this war was was planned. You know, it's a, it's a it's a bold affirmation, but if you start calculating or, or or putting all these things together, it stands out. It stands out in the history of recent warfare as not what the storyline, what the narrative is. The narrative is like a shell that talks about courage and da da da. No, it was the opposite. It was the anti-war. It was soldiers that did not want to fight. It was abuse. It was like practically a military rape of, 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 uh, of another army. Um, nothing at all seems to, is, is, is in, in reality, is what wars typically may be. Um, yet the shell, the narrative of, of the war is, uh, you know, speaks like that. And so the Kirchners come and they um, they start uh, saying, you know, the Malvinas, you know, you, you countries uh, abuse power and they, they take, um, I don't even know how to describe this, they take a nationalistic uh, uh, resource protective uh, po policy and re, re uh, revive the dispute over the Malvinas, and um, they start talking about countries in the world that uh, abuse the, their power and, and um, have all the riches and force weaker, needy countries to give up their resources and force them into their economic systems and and all this, you know, whatever you want to call that. Uh, not aligned with uh, with uh, the English speaking dominated Western world and um, and immediately immediately if you start if you start listening to the response of Brit of Britain to this it almost seems like they're saying oh good finally somebody that wants to be aggressive now we can reaffirm again the narrative we can see you guys you guys are hostile. You are the ones that start everything. You want, you know, look at how you're bullying the poor islanders because, uh, you know, Argentina, Argentina um, does a, an embargo of fruits and, and you can't, you know, fly the British flag or the Falklander flag and does all sorts of diplomatic type uh, uh, things that, according to America and the British, is the language that we are to use that we should use to avoid war and work out um, work out disputes. But when Argentina does it and does not flex a single military muscle, does not move its soldiers towards the island, nothing. No talk to any generals. No generals make any statements. There's nothing military about it. But this uh, does a, something else that is also very diplomatically intelligent, which says they're going to sue any oil company that that comes tries to extract oil from around the oceans all this is used by Britain to make Argentina again seem like the aggressor to the eyes of the world and so more and more it seems like wow it sure seems like Britain was waiting for this war to happen because it fits the storyline and then you think about Galtieri the absurd notion that he would think he could just uh, get away with something that is impossible, <laughs> basically. Um, really gives substance to the, the theory that there's something that happened that history has not recorded, that maybe Galtieri's family could you know, could contribute to, the people that were close to him, that he may have confided things. Because, of course, um, as the, mil the Argentine junta and military governments, dictatorships in Latin America at the time, uh, these, are <laughs> these are boys with, with war toys, and they love having weapons, right? And so... Um, there is... Uh, there is 
space for uh, hypothesizing that they could have easily been blackmailed um, by uh, by saying if if and if any of this this part of our our talk is revealed, you know, you know that we are maybe made uh, um, made it clear that other things would be would come to be known by the Argentinian people if they talk about, well, you know, I know that's kind of a stretch because um, you would have to really be in there to see how these people think and, and, and be part of that world to even guess too much about that. But there certainly is room for such a theory, such a, uh, a, a hypothesis. And um, it, sure, it sure seems like there is more to why the British decided to bring a war to the islands instead of um, use the, the foolish uh, actions of the junta and retaking these islands or invading them to do something else. Because like I was just writing to somebody on Facebook, every other, again, comparing the history of war, Every other situation where a country starts aggressive, hostile military actions um, before there is, uh, or after the war has ended, there's always uh, many, many um, things that are done, events or uh, moves by governments to to work things, you know, to work it, to do things. and. You know, there's uh, once the uh, the junta had invaded the islands, had taken the Malvinas back. Well, you know, Britain and America basically could have gotten together. Right at that moment, it was very America was very much in the spot to not take Britain's side um, because of the OAS or I don't know. But um, then eventually, it kind of like shyly did so, anyways. Um, and there's just many things like didn't Britain care th what repercussions this would bring to the Americas? I mean, all of Latin America saw the the uh, the stance the United States took as a betrayal. Um, you know, it made it all of a sudden insignificant and re reinforced the whole backyard thing. You know, the Latin America is just only our backyard and. So it, it you know one one has to think that um, perhaps even the surgeons of liberal sovereign patriots I don't even know what their politi political current is called but um, like Chavez and Kirchner and Lula and Correa and Maduro and and um, um, the Bolivian guy I forget Morales came in part. And to a great extent, as a result of a a disappointment towards the West, towards America, towards uh, the uh, uh, English American alliance, you know, suspicion of it because of now, did was the British government and, and Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher, not aware that she was causing uh, 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 she was causing a great great effect on the relationship between America and its southern neighboring countries by creating the war, by making this into a war. Um, again, you think, well, that must mean that America then secretly beforehand said, yeah, let's do this. It's another, another reason how you can come to that conclusion. But um, anyways, so that's that's my theory on what 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 I why I think this it's worthy to investigate and find out more about what actually happened to Galcheri and why why did Britain actually so quickly uh, jump and opted for oh yeah what I was uh, saying before is that after the war so often. Uh, after not after the war, but after Galtieri's take back of the island, Britain could have done a whole host of things. It could have 
it could have said, well, you know, be also behind doors because we know it's all about saving face before your people. That matters to all countries and their governments, their leaders and their people. So they they talk to their people a certain way, but when they meet or they send little messages, it's about other workings and negotiations and stuff. So, you know, at that point, if really this was about a righteous consideration of the islanders and the conflict, uh, once the junta had taken back the islands, they could have worked all sorts of things out where, um, in fact, they planned it, they were going to withdraw and just leave a, you know, they could have said, well, just leave civilians, you cannot have, you know, and at that point, let's go with the theory now instead of what's guessing from the perspective of what was told or the narrative that we believe happened. Uh, at that moment, um, you know, um, there are things that could have been done um, that could have uh, achieved much of what Britain would want to keep um, as far as its influence in that area. Um, because really, underneath all of this, underneath it all, the the sticking point, the sore, sort of the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the magma chamber underneath the volcano is Argentina's offense. And I've always explained this to people that uh, I talk about with people on, on what, how to achieve a resolution, um, how to propose a, a solution to the conflict. The, the hot spot, the magma chamber underneath the volcano, is the insult and the offense that was perpetrated onto, Argentinian, uh, onto Argentina's history because they were kicked off the islands and now we're we have them, and nah, 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 you can't do anything about it, we're stronger than you, and so it's a constant humiliation uh, for 150 years, and then they kick, get kicked, their ass get kick, gets kicked in the, uh, in the war. Um, and so, since this is really, seems to be the, uh, they are the ones protesting because they can't fight the English back, they can't win a war to re retake the islands, throughout all of this period. Uh, therefore, the English had, uh, the British had, a, were in a position after the invasion of Galtieri uh, to address this and, and um, you know, say, assuming that they didn't know the, the war was going to happen, like I said before, um, at that point, let Galtieri um, know that they meant business, that they were going to bring war to the islands. And believe me, <laughs> at that point, after Galtieri took back the islands and everybody was out in Plaza de Mayo, uh, Plaza de Mayo uh, celebrating, um, and, they, um, and they started hearing how the British were changing their tune and and gradually America said, you know, uh, you shouldn't have done that. What am I supposed to do? I'm, we're supposed to be allies, but I'm sorry. I got a side with Britain. And they slowly, and this is normally closer to what happens, actually. They slowly could have told Argentina that we are going to act forcefully with war. The Argentinians were not going to, even if they had all of South America's support, you know, <laughs> Brazil was not going to jump into it. Chile was not going to jump into it. Uh, Peru was maybe going to send some airplanes. It doesn't matter whether it was going to stay trying to brave it alone or, you know, Uruguay sent a couple of boats and, and Peru sent a couple of airplanes. It wasn't going to change anything. They could have, uh, once they started talking, well, they talk about Russia joining. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so because... Even though the the junta uh, was mainly trying to please America, I feel there was also the other half. Or maybe let's turn it around. They believed also in the same thing. They were right wing, anti communist, um, um, 
polit political, they were not going to accept. But in any case, let's just present one possible scenario that once Argentina started seeing that Britain and now uh, agreed with the with America with the United States, they were they would um, they would attack Argentina if they don't release the islands. And this, of course, was talked about in secret with the junta, not said all over the papers. This is how things happen, correct? Um, in the real world, they would have done, you know, upside down, backside up flips to uh, to avoid any more humiliation. Uh, they wanted to leave with the victory of having done something for the Argentine, um, the Argentine claim. So Britain allowing them to for allowing the junta to go back and tell the Argentinians, okay, the, the conflict is finally over. From now on, we're going to have a permanent presence on the islands. There, we're you know we're working on it. We're working on it. We're maybe going to have two languages. It seems like we're not going to have two languages. Oh, it seems that we're uh, going to do this. Well, now they they gave us this, and this whole process um, goes on. The Argentines would have digested uh, whatever form the resolution and the end of this conflict uh, when proceeded as. The junta was going to be able to make a somewhat clean dismount, as they wanted, and Britain would have assured itself that uh, the islanders were going to be autonomous, that they would have strong ties, and and there would be or there would be an open, open bridge uh, installed with Britain. Um, simplified people call that shared sovereignty, but that's not how I mean to say it. What I mean to say to describe is that any there's there was a world of workings and negotiations and things that could have been done after the junta arrived on the islands and took back the islands britain had like and this is actually how most conflicts occur when it's not something um well you know some people say some people the many british say it's unnegotiable because they're ours but that uh, is not so the, case, the islands were never um, consolidated as British territory they were uh, disputed with the Spanish and in fact the Spanish remained on sort of officially while the British abandoned their their uh, their settlement and then the Argent and, and the British knew that things were going through Buenos Aires and through Montevideo uh, in fact, the British probably needed the Argentinians to be related to the islands, and this um, this also supports the fact that so many times they kind of were open to. Um, anyways, I don't want to get into human character and why people that first say one thing then become stubborn and say, "Well, no." And countries, you know, nothing makes sense. Why would the British government negotiate, and then? At one day, that uh, at one point, that they would find a lease back settlement with Argentina, therefore recognizing that Argentina Argentina has some expression of sovereign right to these islands. So, the argument that they should have not allowed or or not accepted any kind of negotiation on sovereignty is bogus because. England itself demonstrate, demonstrated it recognizes uh, some legitimacy to Argentina's claim of the island. So after the taking over of the islands by the taking back of the islands by the Argentine military by Galtieri, um, that Britain did not use uh, the situation to end the conflict and still maintain a presence on the island only seems to indicate that the war is what it wanted. So you see how everything starts adding up. That they put a base unnecessarily, unwarranted, unprovoked. That Galtieri would attack a country that could smash 
it and, and have, it, have them go down as the country that that allowed the British to invade Argentina, that, um, you know, that they didn't use more negotiating um, uh, tactics to work something out of the conflict before or after uh, the arrival, before the arrival of the, of the task force or after the end of the war. It all seems to conspire to this uh, theory that um, there is there very, there could have very easily could very could have easily have been a deliberate cajoling of Galtieri in order to have a war in order for the war to happen so that later uh, a different scenario would be left on the islands, one in which all of a sudden the islanders are feeling like they they have a territory and they have somebody to hate. Because if you look at the psychology, and this also um, contributes to the theory, if you look at the psychology of the islanders after the war compared to before the war, the difference is like night and day. Uh, there was always a smoldering underneath kind of uh, idea of uh, we don't want to talk about this. The Argentinians claim our islands, but you know it's there was more talk about when they were here and how we have Spanish names on the island. There wasn't hate, begrudgment, resentment, um, rancor. All this stuff was not. That's all happened because of the war, which could be a good reason to bring a war to the islands because once you have that, you have the desire. It's almost like um, you're not motivated until you have a reason to uh, have an enemy so that you want to you wanna be something or you want to make something out of your land and, and, and you're interested, more interested in your relationship with Britain. So the war served psychologically immensely. Immensely it served the islands. Uh, the islanders because now the islanders want to prove to the world that they, they exist and they, they want to tell the world that they don't that Argentina is not their uh, that they're not Argentinians that they want to be British they welcome investment from from European companies for oil for fishing they, they become much more um, you know an, an enormous psychological sociological change that has come to the islands now the British government, this is a country that has had wars since, you know, centuries. Do you think that they do not know how a people are affected after a war? How people change about their land, about their country, their government, about other countries that relate to them after a war? Concerning conflicts, how they're going to be about a conflict, after war, of course they do. They have a world of experience. Again, another thing that you add to this. You start adding all these things, and it sure as hell seems like Britain wanted and consciously knew they were heading to war. They planned on it. They wanted this war to happen. And at some point, I don't know how far back, maybe they didn't come up with it. Maybe they saw that uh, Galtieri was kicking cans around and and let's see if they go for this or they, you know who knows how how it this this uh, could have been the case uh, is impossible to guess from the from the perspective of, of conceptualizing a theory but in itself it would change history in itself it would change completely what we believe actually happen on these islands if we were to confirm the uh, the existence of this uh, theory concept in itself without the details if we actually see that in fact something points at it that verifies this would not have ever been the case if Britain had was not ex it totally got caught by surprise and and never thought it could benefit from having a war on the islands in a million years. Um, and then all of a sudden that, that proves that the, the, the opposite, that um, 
considering a way of provoking a war on the islands has indeed uh, been entertained. It could change the history of what we now believe happened on the, on the Malvinas Falkland Islands. Okay, thanks for listening. I'm sorry that it ended up being an hour, and I thought it was going to be only 10 minutes, but uh, that's it. <laughs>